With the FK chain resolved, you will now work on the IK chain. At this point, the IK chain may be difficult to see. Press F3 to temporarily turn the view to wireframe mode. Zoom in and double-click the IK shoulder bone, the whole IK chain gets selected. Of course, at this point, we simply call it an IK chain, but it doesn't have an IK solver yet. You're about to change that. With the IK chain selected, right-click and isolate the selection. Press F3 again to go back to shaded mode. Select the shoulder bone, and then apply an HI solver between the shoulder and the wrist. If you wish, you can make the gold display smaller. In a few moments, you won't even need to see it anymore. Next, you need to create a controller to manipulate the IK solution. You can certainly create a shape similar to before, that of the three ring controller. However, you can also go in another direction to differentiate it from the FK controllers. As an example, you could change the three ring shape by adding lines in a crisscross pattern. You will need 3D snap mode to be set in endpoint or in vertex mode for this to work well. Maybe you'll decide you don't even need the circles after all. Maybe just the intersecting lines. When you're happy with the shape, align it to the wrist knob, pivot to pivot, in position and orientation. If you need to scale it, always do so at a sub-object level. You may need to temporarily bring the geometry into view to decide on the scale factor. When done, set the wire color to be the same as the IK chain. Now select the IK goal and link it to the controller. This may be easier to do in wireframe mode. Always remember to name your objects properly. Name the controller Zombie Left Hand IK Control. In fact, do not forget to rename the goal adequately as well. Name it Zombie Left Hand IK Goal. Select the controller and move it around on the XY plane. As you can see, it drives the IK solution. With the controller selected, go ahead and freeze its transforms. You still need to control the elbow swivel. You will use a custom attribute for that purpose, much like you did with the knees. With the IK controller selected, go to the Modify panel and apply an Attribute Holder modifier. Press Alt-1 to open the Parameter Editor dialog. Name the attribute Elbow Swivel and set the width to 100. Set the range from minus 10 to plus 10 and the justification to the right. Click the Add button to add the custom attribute to the modifier. Dismiss the dialog when done. This is work I've done before when working on the legs, so it should be familiar to you. Zoom in on the controller and the IK goal. Open the Reaction Manager. Click the Add Master icon and then click the controller in the scene. Wire it to the Elbow Swivel custom attribute. Now select the IK goal and click the Add Selected icon in the Reaction Manager. Wire it to the Swivel Angle value. Add two new states. Set them in such a way to get a 90 degree swivel angle when the custom attribute is at 10 and a minus 90 degree angle when it's at minus 10. Close the Reaction Manager dialog when done. 
Select the controller and move it around, and then test the custom attributes properties. Be sure to reset the controller's transform to zero to go back where you started. Exit isolate mode. You now have manipulators to control the FK chain and the IK chain. However, neither of these two chains is affecting the character's geometry. The geometry is skinned to the gray bones that still need to be blended in IKFK modes. Before you get to that, however, there's one more controller that is needed, one to handle the clavicle. Whether you lift the arm using IK or FK, you still need to compensate with the clavicle, otherwise you get a pretty bad and unnatural motion. If you made transform changes to the various controllers, select them and reset them to zero. In the next movie, you set a controller for the clavicle.